Thank Will the clerk please read the statement? Roll call. Councilmember Here. Here. Councilmember Rizzuto. Here. Councilmember Wetzel. Here. Council President Murphy. Here. Please rise to see the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, May I have a motion to open the floor to public comment? So move. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Please step up. Paladini from um, Highland Lakes. My comments tonight are addressed to Mayor Shortway and to the council, to the people sitting behind me, and also to the people who would be watching this on Service Electric Cable TV. Mayor Shortway. You and I have had our differences. I have never sought to hurt you in any way. I have tried many times to get you involved in our scenic byway committee by virtue of the fact that you are mayor and out of respect for that office, which you have handily rejected and refused time and time again. But what I want to know is why you would use personal circumstances against me to hurt all of the residents and the children and students of Vernon Township by doing what you did at the Black Creek site. Excuse me, but, and I'm not sure, I don't really want to get into any dialogue. You're more than welcome to address uh, everyone here. Doing, address, right? Well, it's really addressing the council. So I'm, just, I'm addressing everyone. Yes, so I'm just, just saying that, but it's not going to be a back and forth dialogue, so that's all. Just well, I haven't asked yep. for a response yet. Well, that's okay, what I'm just. So don't clock my time. I'm you're not cut clocking, in on me. I'm not all clocking right. your time. Okay. So why would you want to do something to hurt the children of our town? For 10 years, the governing bodies of this town, mayors, councils, for 10 years, from 2007 to this date, have, in a community spirit, reciprocated with the Vernon Township Historical Society, with the state of New Jersey, and have been mowing the Black Creek site, which is approximately one acre and a trail. He's Mayor Trailway, right? Mayor Greenway, Mayor Trailway. And for 10 years, it took approximately one hour for the DPW employee who's already on site at Maple Grange Park to go next door and mow the Black Creek site. This is what we do on the Black Creek site. We created an outdoor classroom with a kiosk and benches. We have brought hundreds, if not thousands, an entire eighth grade class three years in a row. Please address the council. Ms. Palladini, please address site. the council. Please address the council. That's okay. all I'm asking. Please, please don't interrupt me. Please I want address them the council. The That's fine. That's okay. fine. You could pass them out. Do you do that like thinking maybe I'll lose my train of thought or something? No, not at all. Okay. Thank you. Thousands of students we've taken there to teach them about that archaeological gem that's in our town that we are so fortunate to have. One of seven in the entire state of New Jersey to be on the New Jersey 
and the National Registers of Historic Places. And for 10 years, this town has had a good faith agreement to mow that site. It's not even that he just stopped mowing it and ruined the site, but he didn't even tell anybody. Didn't even give anyone the courtesy of it. I happened to go there two weeks ago with the state of New Jersey, with the Department of Transportation officials, with the director of the Scenic Byway Office, with representatives from the Historic Preservation Office. I happened to take them there on our tour of the Scenic Byway to show them our archaeological gem. And when I got there, I saw the grass in the field three feet high. We have canceled every educational program that we have scheduled for the Black Creek site for this summer. Hundreds of students, hundreds of adults hike that trail every day that the Historical Society with very hard labor, volunteer labor, created that trail that this mayor has now ruined. Here is Mayor Shortway a week or two ago, creating a new trail, part of his 19-mile trail vision. And here is Mayor Shortway destroying a trail. Not just any trail, but the archaeological gem of all of New Jersey. Am I very emotional? Yes. Very, very hard we worked, many people, over the course of years to create that trail for the good of the community. That 10 years worth of governing bodies and mayors maintained. And it took one mayor one month to ruin. If you know anything about farming, as Mayor Shortway does, you know that if you let a field go, it gets very hard to maintain. The invasives come in. We can't just go in there with a lawnmower now. We have to find someone with a brush hog. Mayor Shortway's wife wrote on Facebook, the Black Creek site is state-owned property that the township has been maintaining. But unfortunately, due to budget restraints and the demand for additional work at Vernon Parks, the township will no longer be able to mow the Black Creek site. Now I have a question. There is a piece of township, uh, I'm sorry, state-owned property along Canal Road. It's part of Mayor Shortway's Greenway plan. It's part of Mike Fury's Greenway plan. There's a significant strip on Canal Road that's state-owned property. The township has been maintaining it for years and continues to maintain it to this day. Why was one cut, but the other continues to be maintained? State owned. So I'm here tonight to ask this council to overrule Mayor Shortway's decision to stop mowing that site that all Vernon residents have enjoyed and had the benefit of for 10 years and direct the DPW to once again spend that one hour a week when they're already <laughs> mowing the trails adjacent to it. And I'm asking you as a council if you have that authority to overrule it. Now, it seems that since we started complaining, Mayor Shortway decided to go in there and just cut like a narrow strip from the entrance to the kiosk, which a former mayor built for us, by the way total donated time and money. So he decided that maybe this little narrow strip would make us happy. So I'm asking you tonight to take action and overturn his decision. And if you don't take action to overturn that decision, I'm asking you to get off the site. Don't mow an inch. We don't need your three foot path from the entrance to the kiosk. We'll take care of it ourselves if you're not going to. <laughs> Does anyone have a comment on it? No. Actually, I think Surely the you're free to comment. I'm not asking for a question and answer period. 
Is there a council person here tonight who would introduce the notion of going back to maintaining it after it's been maintained for 10 years? Yeah, maybe it is yeah, something yeah. we should talk about. Okay. I, I, I myself have been up there, I think with Mr. Wessel, when these classes were held and you had the trail going up to the sites and then you had the, the, the base camp, if you want to call it that, where everything was organized. Exactly. And I find it, it, it's a great opportunity for people to recognize the value of our inherent natural resources that are particularly indigenous to Vernon Township. And while I don't know if the council can require the mayor to have mowers go in, I can certainly ask the council to request the mayor that he do it. And if he Please does, do. Fine. And Please I would, do. I would be willing to make that motion. That Please do, because it's an embarrassment how hard we work to get our township designated the seventh scenic byway in the state of New Jersey. And here we are bringing state officials up here to show them our beautiful, cultural, natural, scenic resources. And this is what we come upon. Do you think you could get this entire classroom and this reenactor? You think you could shove them all in a two foot strip that you mowed, Mayor? To do our reenactments. Excuse, excuse me, I think programs. at this point your time is up. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. As a history teacher for 35 years in the Vernon School District and head of the history department, I would make the recommendation or the suggestion to the mayor, since he is also a former history teacher and loves history as I do, that he says. reconsider and please start taking care of the Maple Green site. Is that a second? It's, it's not the Maple Green site. Yeah, why did we Black start? Creek. It's, it's, it's the Black, it's the Black Creek, Creek site. site. Yep. If we've done it all these years, why did we stop? I'll address it in my comments. Okay. If it's budget, keep in mind that they're already mowing the state-owned site that's part of his trail network. And keep in mind that this mayor would rather pay an attorney tens of thousands of dollars to fight the $60 that they owe me as secretary for the Environmental Commission. Okay, I don't think that we should but be discussing that budget. here. That's right, so neither we'll here nor there. Is, there. is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Excuse me, there's a motion on the floor. Okay. And I'd like to find Frank. Is there a motion? Yeah, yeah. I made the motion. What is the motion again? The motion would be that we would request Mayor reconsider his actions and have labor assigned to the Black Creek site and bring it into control. Second. Second. Who owns the Black Creek site? Who owns the property? Is that state? The state? Clerk, can you roll call the motion? Councilmember Kadish. What? I think it's an illegal motion. I believe Mrs. Palladini was instrumental in making this form of government the kind of form of government that it is. The council cannot direct the mayor, or as far as I'm concerned, even request to the mayor totally of how he totally does his business or the business administrator. It is, it is not correct for us to deal with details, as far as I'm concerned. If you want to change a policy, then that's another matter, but you haven't, you haven't done that. My vote is no. Councilmember Holmes? Yes. Well, I want to discuss it. He's got some information for us. Well, they, want yes. to, they made a motion, so they're going to cut it then? Yes, then. No, we don't, okay. yeah, we don't know what his, his yes. comments are. Councilmember Wessel? Yes. No, based on the fact that uh, we should not be directing the mayor, I mean, I'd like to hear what his comments are. So at this moment, I'll say no. Thank you. And by the way, I used to mow that myself. I volunteered. Yeah. 
Is there anyone else from the public that would like to address the council? Good evening, council. My name is Bill Pareka. I'm at uh, One Laurel Lake Road, Holland Lakes. And I wanted to try and make the mayor, Mr. Mayor, um, and the council aware of a problem that I've seen on Canister Road. Now, the eight years I've been living there, uh, my house overlooks the road, so I'm, you know, probably within about 70 feet of the road. In the eight years I've been living here, I have seen everything from uh, huge trucks, pickup trucks, cars, motorcycles, going through right in front of our houses at at least 70 miles an hour and, and faster. Um, in the eight years I'm here, I, I've seen three car accidents, three cars go off the road. Uh, no one was killed, fortunately, <coughs> but um, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe the council can make a motion tonight to possibly lower the speed limit to 35 miles an hour. Um, in my opinion, from the bottom of Canisteer in Vernon Township to the very top, every place you see a household or residential area is 35 miles an hour except for Laurel Lake. Um, I'm, to be clear, I'm asking for about 200 yards. From when you come up past the gun range, you go through the twisties, and then it flattens out from about there past our second driveway. We have two driveways that come onto Canisteo Road. I could tell you a number of stories about coming up Canisteo, trying to turn left into our driveways. Obviously, there's no shoulder. There's no room for anyone to get around. And you constantly hear people you know, hitting their horns because they want to go 50 and 60 miles an hour. Yet, it's a one-lane road, and people need to turn left and, and turn right going down the hill. Um, not only the, the danger of, of people, I mean, literally flying through this section to the point where I can't sit in my backyard. I can't. I, can't, I was going to build a porch. I'm not going to do it because all you hear is car engines and truck engines all day long. Uh, 515, you can't have uh, big trucks on that. All the big trucks come up canister to avoid it. They cut through. They get to the top of uh, canister and either go breakneck or up towards Barry Lakes. Um, I'm contemplating selling my house. It's, it's so disturbing that I can't even keep my windows facing canister. I can't keep those open in the summertime. The sound is, is ridiculous. Uh, not to mention, I, I ride a motorcycle, but not to mention the Harleys, where I can literally feel my floor in my house shake. Not shake, but you can feel the vibrations of motorcycles, loud motorcycles, big trucks, every kind of truck you can imagine, 18 wheelers coming through there. School buses, I'm sorry, but school buses, and I'm not trying to get anyone in trouble, but they are constantly going through there, and they, they make a lot of noise too, but they're 50, 50 miles an hour plus. Um, I'd like, I'm sure everyone here in the council has gone down Canisteo Road. Is anyone here who hasn't? Has anyone not driven down Canisteo Road through Laurel Lake? And I'm even guilty. If I'm not going to stop at my house, I'm kind of guilty. You would usually do about 50 miles an hour through there. Mayor Murata, I believe, lowered it from 40 to, uh, 45 to 40 coming down the hill. Um, we all know how we drive. Everyone drives 10 miles over the limit. It's, it's just the way we drive. Uh, I'm asking for maybe the board to make a motion to drop the 35. I'm not going to be calling the police every time someone goes through there at 40. I understand people will go faster. But I like to drive fast, but I, I do it in places where it's reasonable. Uh, I think if someone saw a, a speed limit of 35 miles an hour, I think that might register in their mind, you know what, you better not go 50 through there. Because if you do, the ticket will be enormous. And maybe have a police officer down there once, once a week for half an hour just to have a presence of police, because that's why people fly through there. There's no police presence at all. They will sit down by the reservoir. I've seen them sit speed traps down there. Not sure why. I mean, it's, it's, there's nothing down there. Um, so I, my, 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 first, my first reason is safety. My second reason is it's driving all, and everyone, my neighbors, everyone who lives there are driving us crazy with the sound of 
trucks and cars. It, it, it feels like we live next to a highway, to be quite honest with you. So I'm hoping. So this is the second time I've done this. I believe I was up here four, what's the, five years ago. What's yeah, the cross the street thing. this yes, area? Yes, cross street there. It's Laurel Lake. Laurel Lake is, is, a, is a small road. It, it's almost like a driveway. And then there is, it's just the flat section, right? Car, trucks and cars come down the hill, so they're going fast, and they fly through, fly through there. Cars gain speed to go up the hill. So it's, you know, either way. Honestly, I'm, I'm asking for 200 yards. Well, what we can do is we can have uh, the mayor address us with our chief of police. Would you do that, Mayor? Um, yes, sir. I, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. That, that, that's great. Um, we had a similar problem in uh, Barrett Road, right. in which um, we stationed. I think, uh, I think we had a uh, one time a speed measuring wagon, yeah. which warned people of what their speed was. But we also put a um, an old police squad car up there. Um, and it gets, has a presence. Um, but is that part of a road that we can adjust the speed? It's not the county? That's a township road. Uh, Ma city. Mayor Murata. No, it's a township road. Uh, yeah, he but actually do we brought have the same the point up saying it was a county, county road. I looked into it. Well, yeah, the, so. county put, the county puts those, um, those uh, lights up, the, whatever they are, the um, message boards with the speed limit. But we don't have one. Is there one we could borrow from the county? <laughs> we don't. We don't have one. We just knocked it what, down. What, what, what kind of board is that, man? Message, like a message board, board. that shows the speed limit. But oh, Vernon, yeah, yeah, the electronic we don't, ones. We don't yeah. own one. I think the one from five seventeen. Yeah. The one on, yeah. is that Vernon's or is that the county? You know, I that think the there might have been one down there years ago. Right, but I'm just the one on five seventeen. Is that the county's or is that the townships? I think that's the county's. Right, so that's not a county. The five seventeen is a county road. Canister is not. So I know Hardiston. Uh, the, I think it was Dan who made the point, put the police car there. I think Hardiston puts the police car there with a dummy. Yeah. I, are we talking Barrett or Canisteo? On Canisteo. No, we did it That's years ago Hardiston at Barrett. Does on, on oh, 515. Barrett. Okay. They have a, a, a many times the police car there with a dummy sitting in. If it was up to me, you guys could park right, put a, put a police car right in Laurel Lake. You, if it was up to me. But the powers to be of Laurel, oh, we don't want people getting mad at us and, and taking revenge. Uh, my suggestion, instead of the board that shows your speed, I think, at least I do, when I see those, you kind of slow down a little bit. If you want a true reading of how fast people are going through there, just put the two little rubber lines across the road. Yeah. You just, and just do that to begin with, and you will see. You will, I, it, it's amazing. I've seen people pass cars going in both directions. They're, they're passing. Mm -hmm. All right. Last thing I wanted to do on a Monday night, come talk to you nice people. I really, you know, I'm not great at public speaking, but something has to be done. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm not kidding. When I, I'm com contemplating selling my house. I, I, the, the, just the sound alone is driving me nuts. And unfortunately, I work from my house. I don't go to an office. So I'm there a lot. And that's unfortunate at this point. Um, but again, I, I, I wouldn't put a sign. I would put the strips. And you will see. You will see how fast people people go down, uh, and it starts. It probably starts at around 5:30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. You got to keep your windows yeah. shut. So, I appreciate uh, I appreciate the council's time and, and listening to me. And um, I hope I really hope something can be done. I know lives will be saved. It's only a matter of time. I don't want to jinx, but it's a matter of time that someone. There's going to be a real bad accident, and someone's going to get killed. It's only a matter of time. Thank you. The, the way I see people driving. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Good evening, Doreen Edwards, Highland Lakes. I'm just going to play devil's advocate for you for a little bit. I live near Canisteo Road myself. I live in Highland Lakes, Road in. I've been since 1985. And that is a main thoroughfare in and out of the mountain community to get out to 23. Now, I do understand people do travel a little faster than they should. I'm not questioning that. What I'm questioning is, is how the gentleman thinks it's going to change the noise factor. Um, talk about noise factor. I've been home lately, and somebody's always blowing the leaves. Today was a beautiful day, and I had to listen to two and a half hours of somebody blowing their leaves. And then I actually did get a headache from it. And so if we're talking about noise control, I would like something done about that, because not every single day somebody's making noise, and it's getting harder and harder to enjoy the peace. So yes, I understand what he's saying. 
I haven't seen, thank God, any fatal accidents. I don't know if there's been any on Canister Road. I, knew, I know people do go faster. Unfortunately, we're a bedroom community. People have to get in and out. And actually, <clears throat> people come off Canister and cut through a piece of Highland Lakes to go down the mountain into the valley as a shortcut. So what the lake community did was put in some, I call them sleeping policemen, the, um, the, the bumps, the speed bumps to kind of slow people down. So um, I just wanted to put my two cents in there with that. So I'm, I'm tired of noise too, but I didn't move near to a, a road that was a thoroughfare for in and out of the lake community. So thank you. Thank you. I, Is I there anyone else that would like to address the council? I, got a, I have a leaf blower next door to me too. <laughs> Sally Rinker Vernon. I just want to make a comment that I heard some misinformation that I think should be cleared up for both the public and the knowledge of the council, if in fact you are not knowledgeable, that you can direct this mayor, okay, by a majority vote. The mayor can be directed to go back to the drawing board for budgets and even to uh, look over bonds that are put on the agenda. Any single council person can direct the mayor to give a report on any single subject that they wish. So in fact, um, you know, when someone represents uh, information up there to the public as if it's the truth, it's, it's really a, a disservice to all of us, especially when this government and all governments need to operate with checks and balances, everyone's input from all sides. The mayor does not act in a va vacuum, okay? Why have a council? The council most definitely can direct the mayor, and in some instances it's required. Thank you. Thank you. I stand corrected, I guess. Is there anyone else from the public that would uh, like to address the council? Seeing no one else, do I have a motion to close the public? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next we have the mayor's report. Thank you. The executive committee of the statewide insurance fund instituted a safety grant program in an effort to provide support for programs and that enhance the safety for residents and employees. We were rewarded $8,575. On our trail day, we had 50 volunteers. The following businesses assisted us. Countryside Landscaping donated four workers. Daily Bean donated free coffee for those that participated. Suez donated four cases of uh, bottled waters. We cleared approximately one half mile of township owned trails that was overgrown. Girl Scouts added several signs and hung 20 birdhouses along the trail. Regarding the dispute we have with FEMA regarding uh, the hurricane back in 2011, Senators Booker and Menendez and Congressman Gottheimer continue to support our efforts to obtain funds promised by FEMA. We received the following response from FEMA. The applicant made two written requests for extension of time to submit their second appeal, once on December 4, 2015, and again on January 7, 2016. The agency does not have a record of responding to those requests. Regardless, both of the applicant's requests were submitted beyond the 60-day limit provided by statute and regulation, and FEMA could not have granted them. As of November 16, 2015, 60 days after the receipt of FEMA's first appeal decision, the applicant's appeal rights lapsed. Thus, there is no basis to reconsider FEMA's response to the applicant's second appeal. FEMA has taken issue with how the former administration handled this matter. We will continue to pursue this matter on behalf of the affected qualified private communities. We're talking over $200,000 here. And they just don't want to negotiate or do anything about it. But we will continue with the help of our senators and Congressman Gottheimer. I received several inquiries related to the Western Scenic Byway and a grant that the committee allegedly received. On April 10, 2017, Mrs. Palladini stated, the Scenic Byway Committee has hired a consultant to get started with the management plan and has received $150,000 to $200,000 grant for that purpose. Since I took office, proponents have solicited my support, including coming to my home unannounced on Sunday mornings. I contacted Ms. Cindy Bloom Cronin from the New Jersey DOT in regards to this matter. 
Ms. Palladini previously identified Ms. Cronin as the liaison between Ms. Palladini and the New Jersey DOT. The following statements were received from Ms. Cronin. I will post the correspondence in the immediate future so that the public may read it. The Western Highlands Scenic Byway was designated as the 8th New Jersey Scenic Byway. As part of the New Jersey Scenic Byway program, the Western Highlands Scenic Byway will be assisted in the preparation of a management plan and sign location plans by the consultant Parsons and Brickerhoff. This is not a grant. They did not apply for funds to do the work. No funds will be need to be supplied by the byway sponsor, Sussex County or the municipality. The management plan and sign location plan is part of the byway program and funding for this project is to fulfill the New Jersey Scenic Byway Program's two-step two, two -step process for byway designation. Any money in the byway and program must be used for the project that benefits all of the other seven byways. Money from this program could not be given to this byway to be used towards a greenway and or a parking lot for the Appalachian Trail Boardwalk without going through a grant application process where all the byways could apply for the same funds. The Western Scenic Byway Plan includes Sand Hill and McPeak Roads. Roads other than state roads do need a resolution of support from the agency that has the jurisdiction of that portion of the roadway during the preparation of the corridor management plan and site and location. There is no resolution by the governing body in support of adding these municipal roads to be added to the byway. It is clear there is confusion regarding this matter and I will not commit township to this project at this time. Due to manpower and budget restraints, I have directed the DPW personnel direct their efforts on our township parks and not the state meadows. Following Mr. DeYoung's complaint of dandelions at Maple Grange Park, which I found to be frivolous, I inspected Veterans Memorial Park. The park and memorials were found to be in need of attention. My wife Sherry, President Murphy, and I weeded the war memorial area. The memorial itself required attention. We scraped off the remaining paint repainted it and planted two flats of flowers to honor our military and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. I have directed the DPW that the memorial is a priority and is to receive the utmost attention at all times. Regarding the pasture located at Black Creek site opposite the Great Lawn and Maple Grange Park, I directed that it not be mowed at the present time. However, the trail around the meadow and a path to the kiosk were to be maintained. However, this morning, Mrs. Palladini, who is a steward of this state property, requested that the trail and pathway not be mowed by our DPW if the meadow is not mowed. The township has mowed this parcel for the last several years. It is now time for the state to share in the service of their own property. I believe that an agreement has been reached that the historic field will not be mowed by the township and grounds, will be maintained as the federal government practices on the battlefields of Gettysburg. Those hollow grounds will remain in their natural historic state. And finally, I'm happy to report that the roof repairs of this building are essentially complete. A review of the punch list and a final walk through inspection still remains to be executed. Our township will receive a credit of $20,725. That's it for now. I was at the Excuse meeting. me. Uh, Council Member Holmes was trying to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Go ahead, Pat. Okay. Please. Go ahead. One of you. <laughs> so why this mowing of this Black Creek? I mean, I go back there, too, and I enjoy walking back there. It keeps me off the path where there's runners and bikers on Maple Grange. Um, we did this all these years. Why are we stopping? And wasn't there trees that were supposed to go there from the tree grant or something? I interest a building to honor the Muncie people, part of the Lenape uh, tribe, to take some of those trees and create a Lenape tree grove of trees that they have in their culture. And the state said we couldn't do it. All right, so you were willing to put our trees on state property. Excuse, excuse me, Ms. Palladini. We were willing to put our trees on state property, so why wouldn't we cut it? I mean, it's 
we're willing to work Those additional on man hours are going to be used to straighten Veterans Memorial Park. I still have to go down to the park down in Old Orchard, and they'll be maintained first. But if it only takes an hour to cut it, I mean, we do lots of things for other groups. Right. Um, the state can mow their own property. Money, and we, we do it because the whole town benefits from it. Right. There's a lot of things I don't agree with, but I have to look at it as if, well, everybody else is enjoying it. And so I don't say anything. So everybody enjoys that. So why wouldn't we do that? We'll spend more time taking care of our parks, such as Veterans Memorial Park. I don't think that would hold up the production of things in this town for one hour. Have you inspected Veterans Memorial Park lately? Well, you just said you worked on it. And then why did it get in that condition in the first place? I don't know. I don't know. When I looked at Memorial, it probably hadn't been so painted in years. But I agree. I think we should cut it. And I think we are able to direct the mayor, because why have a council if you can't direct? And why wouldn't he want to listen to the council? The majority of the council wants something. Why wouldn't you want to do it? So whether if you think it's in our form of government or not to direct the mayor, it doesn't matter. We do what's right. So, there anyway. are, there are there are subtle differences between the three different forms, and I've experienced all of them. Against it. You do what's right. What makes sense? That, that's what I feel. What makes sense? If your your council people are saying something. You've been in office. You've been in office for two years. At some point, that had to have been addressed. And if you're going to blame it on the previous administration, one more time. <laughs> I want to get ill because I was part of the previous administration and somehow they always found time and the money to be able to satisfy the requirements in terms of taking care of their park, their parks and other assets. Now, I don't know why you brought up the issue of this grant. I was at the table for the, in the scenic byways meeting and I specifically asked if there was grant money available. And I was told, yes, that grant money is sits in an account that is controlled by the people who run the scenic byways project. So it's not going to be given at this point to the local uh, personnel, but be maintained by the people in Trent. And that is a dedicated fund from what I understood from the people from Trenton, that it was to be used for the enhancement of the scenic byways. I'm looking at the note, I read that note that you gave us, and to me, there's some misstatements in there, some areas where I think you took some liberties in terms of interpretive license. But I want the people to know what I heard personally from the people who were here from Trenton not one, not two, but three people. And they were very excited about the, this scenic byways and what it would bring to the township. And as far as Mrs. Ohm's comments in terms of requesting you to do something, I think we all respect the fact that you're the mayor. I know I've mentioned it myself. But I think at this point, you, you, you need to overlook the personal entanglements that you may have uh, gotten yourself involved in and do what's best for the people of the township, not, not to uh, satisfy uh, Mayor Shortway's uh, particular uh, peak, fit of peak, if you want to call it that. You know, and I know we now have a motion that's been passed asking you to go ahead and mow that long. I'm hoping that you'll do it. Now, we just came out of an executive session where the issue was for the <coughs> length on, uh, on the contract, whether it be one year or three. And I go back to the minutes that were made, which will be brought up shortly, where those minutes do not reflect the council's decision on that particular point of view. And with that in mind, I'm going to ask myself, I'm going to make a motion myself and ask for support from Mrs. Holmes and 
Mr. Wetzel, because they made the they supported us in the original one, that we change that particular number to three on the agreement and forward it to the MUA and that this vote be taken in public. And I believe you're acting without the authority to do so because it's clear under the Faulkner Act, the strong mayor government, that the mayor negotiates the contract. You know Your that. option is to consent and advise. On the contrary, That's it. You can, we can consent and we can also ask for changes. And if we don't get the change, then we may not approve. You may not. Are there any other comments here? Yeah, I, I'd like to get back to the grass cutting situation because I've worked the camps uh, with Mrs. Palladini for what, three years now, Jesse, four years, something like that. And it's, it's a cultural experience for the kids who are there. It's a cultural experience for the adults who are there. And this area lacks cultural environment. When I asked when I was teaching history and I asked the kids, what are the cultural areas in Sussex County? You know what number one was? The Holland American Bakery and the windmill. That's how much culture is here. So by, by neglecting this area, we are ne neglecting a culture, a cultural area. And again, you know, uh, I, I, I just personally think it's, it's a mistake not to mow. But that decision rests with you. Okay. Uh, next, we have the minutes. Um, Council Member Rizzuto, were you asking? Uh, I closed. Mm. We closed. Yes. Okay. That was the mayor's comment. Um, Sorry. Did you say that you were going to request changes in the minutes? When they come up. Well, we're there now. Are you putting yeah. the first? Meeting? No, I was just, you mentioned that you wanted to make changes in the minutes. I think we need to go to the regular meeting minutes on the agenda first. Okay. Well, may I have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes and the executive session minutes? Motion. May I have a second? I'd like to remove the executive session minutes from that motion. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of May 22nd? Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Gator? Yes. Yes. Council Member Rizzuto? Yes. Council Member Wood? Yes. Council President Burton? Yes. Okay. The executive session minutes, you said that you were requesting a change to this? Is there a motion placing it on the floor? I'll make that motion. Second? Second. At that meeting, It, it should not be discussed in public. However, it's the governing body's prerogative if they want to discuss it in public. I think we're only looking at one particular area that's remain for this discussion, and that is the fact that uh, the paternity agreement was, su was supported by the majority of the council to be changed from <coughs> one to two years, and it does not. It's not reflected. In how did how did that occur since there wasn't a vote taken? Yes there was. Yes there was. I know you. I, it was my impression it was a a, a, ten, a tentative poll that took place in executive session. That's correct. There can be no binding vote in executive session. And as far as I was concerned, it wasn't even an official poll. It was just an expression of an opinion. Well, why can't we make it a vote in the public right now? <coughs> it's not on the agenda. Is it? It's not an agenda item. Oh, that's not a. It's not in protocol. <coughs> Mayor does the negotiations. Not us. Well, then he has to get a test and we have to vote yes or no. So why not go <coughs> and draw again? This well, is what we're asking. When the contract comes up, when the contract comes <coughs> up, 
when it comes up on the on the uh, <coughs> agenda, then the council can ask. Yes, what the majority of the council requested was that the version of the contract be changed to reflect the wishes of the majority of the council. And it hasn't. Um, the vote hasn't been taken. And it was. We don't have. We haven't had the contract presented to us in public. No, we had it presented to us in closed session. Yes, but and we I'm haven't. Not going to go any further than simply say the term of the contract was the issue in question and that the majority of the council wished that it be changed from one year to three years. Am I correct, Mrs. Holmes? Have you, you are my correct, Mr. Holmes. How did this occur? Did this take place behind closed doors yes. among yes. three of you? It's at a closed no. It happened at the meeting. Talking about the David the So, in other words, an me. wait, wait, wait. In other words, an official vote took oh, place in the executive no, session. On the contrary, Mr. Cater, we sat there and we all gave our opinion on the various parts of the contract. That's called an opinion. That's, that's not right. a vote. That's right. And the opinion of the majority of the council was on that particular issue. That's an opinion. That, that it be changed from one year to three years, and it was noted that. The majority of the council would not approve the contract unless it were reflected that change. Okay, so I contend when the contract is put on the agenda, whatever year is in there, you can then request it be changed if it's not satisfactory. If it's not changed, you could vote it up or down. So would you like the minutes to reflect the change that there was a majority of the council members that requested the years be changed to three to three to yes. three <coughs> we have to vote, vote on that or to just a roll no, call? Have to vote on it. we have to roll call yeah do i have a motion for that second change it second. Second. change it roll call member Hayden? no council member Moon? yes council member Duda? yes council member Wesley? yes I'm voting yes to changing the minutes to reflect from one the one to three years. Yeah, was indeed discussed. Thank you. Items for discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, May. Okay, we have a uh, we already have a motion on the floor. So roll call to approve the minutes. Councilmember Kadish. No. Well, I approve them with those changes, but no, not without the changes. Just with the changes. Yes. Okay. So yes. Yes with the changes. Yes for the changes. No. Yes. With the changes. Yes. And under protest, I still say that Mrs. Holmes did not clearly indicate her opinion during that meeting. Oh, I did. Okay. Can not we move on? Can we move on? Items for discussion. That's what votes NW are for. Financial Group. I was vocal. I said what I Well, Mr. Volker and uh, Elka, please uh, give your presentation. Sure. I, um, in your packet is a financial advisor. I just wanted to go over the reason that I brought this to your attention. Um, a financial advisor is someone the town can go to that can assist when needed on services such as the structuring of long-term debt, the modeling of redevelopment or pilot agreements, or dealing with public-private partnerships. A financial advisor has vast knowledge of different investment vehicles, including the bond market and NJEIT, and has worked with the local finance board when needed. This is not to take work away from anyone, but it allows the township to run ideas by an independent party who has seen how similar situations have played out in other towns. A financial advisor has the pulse of the market and can help with the timing of debt restructuring. In my budget hearing for finance earlier in the year, I had put funds in the line item financial consulting. I asked to bring this forward for discussion to ask if I can get your support to move forward. I have received a proposal from NW Financial who worked with us a few years ago when the SEC was auditing the continuing disclosure requirements of all municipalities. This proposal encompasses all of what they do, although I wouldn't recommend that we utilize all of those services as some items either myself or our bond attorney handles. So this would be on a, there's no retainer, it's not, you only pay when you use them and it would be more of as an advice and consulting. What would, what would be an estimated cost per use? 
Well, it depends on what project they're doing. So if it's actually going out for bonds, they have like a set price, which is in the proposal. Otherwise, it would be um, $205 an hour for a partner, and the price goes down. Um, it can help the, with restructuring. Would they give an estimate of the number of hours required for, for a job? I would ask for that before I had them work on anything. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you don't pay out. unless you use them. You mentioned going out for bonds. Are you saying that they would supersede Hawkins Delafield and the bond no, council? He would prepare all the bond documents. They could help with structuring it. Say we had um, the debt for Ordinance 1122 and 1123, which relates to the MUA. Say we wanted to do something creative to not have the burden so much on the rate payers, we can try to restructure that with going to the local finance board and looking at non-conforming debt, non debt schedules. So that's something that they have the knowledge of more frequently. They take care of these things. More than Hope Hawkins Delafield? No, more than myself. So why would, I can't get why advice. Wouldn't we, on a bond situation, why wouldn't we use our bond counsel? We would use him to actually issue the bonds, but I can't get financial advice from our bond attorney. It's a conflict of interest. So that's why you have a financial advice. Well, not only that, the number of, of cities that these people have been involved in is tremendous, and in, in their expertise and they show a far great uh, uh, breadth and range than what a local bond person would have. They also have a lot of um, experience in um, sewer, water, utilities, so that could help. And for major cities. That would help at least give us some ideas of which way to move. Yeah. If we were to agree to this, should we be putting a cap on this? I have, I have a, for this year, I have 5,000 earmarked towards it. So if I put a resolution forward, that would be the amount for this year, and it would be capped in our budget. So. And I don't know that I would use that much this year. Yeah. It would first do a review of all of our debt and give us ideas. Would they um, piggyback on what's already been done? Mm -hmm. Because we've had quite a few studies on that. Right, and I have my long range debt schedule that they would use to start with so they wouldn't have to recreate that. And it's up to you if you want to go with this firm or if you want me to get proposals from other firms, I can do that as well. We use them before, we've used this firm before, so that's why I called them to get, so you can have an idea of what the cost would be. Right. Uh, just, we've used Hawkins for so long. Mm -hmm. They are considered the preeminent bond council in the area, New York, Wall Street. As far back as when we bonded all of our schools and I was president on the school board. Now, does, do they also provide this service out of another division? No, in fact, he, uh, he recommended, he recommended that, that I get a financial advisor for the town. Okay. And you're comfortable with these people? I'm comfortable with these people. You gotta work with them. Mm -hmm. Time. You have my I support. The tape. Um, next item for discussion is pump station two. Um, do the administrator, Mr. Volker, and the mayor uh, have any updates on anything? The pump house is of major concern, which I've said numerous times here. The filing for Chapter 11 protections by Mountain Creek may add more to this. Um, if it goes down, it has to be replaced. We already know it's a two year, 18 months to two years to replace this. It has to be replaced. We may, we are looking at the NJ EIT trust to help us with this situation. The bond uh, financial advisors will be very important uh, because we have 1122, we have 1123. Those bonds, I think there's almost $7 million in there. And what I'll do is I prepared these remarks because we found a document in a file that none of us existed. Um, last week, 
just to, I don't know if you know about this. I was in North Carolina, but I got the phone call. Uh, last week, the Sand Hill pump station's roof was found to be compromised. I've been highly critical of the former administration for not following through on forcing Mountain Creek to replace this component of our source system. According to the VTMUA director, Mr. John Skirbo, the roof issue creates an unsafe structure and leaks. Leaks create infiltration resulting in further weakening of the structure. Now, I haven't been able to go out and see if Mountain Creek fixed it today. Mr. Skirbo has been, they didn't fix it. We've been on them, or Mr. Skirbo has, uh, asking them to hurry up and fix this. It's right over the, uh, the tanks inside. When I first became mayor, I met with the VTMUA Chairman Zeno and Mr. Skirbo during the first few days of my term. I desired to know why the pump station had not been replaced by July 1, 2013, as required by the 2012 interlocal agreement between Mountain Creek and the township. They both informed me there was an extension. I requested a copy of the agreement and neither could produce it. Research of the former council and MUA minutes and resolutions were absent of any such extension. Approximately three weeks ago, a letter between Mayor Murata and Mr. Andrew Mobile was by chance discovered in a file. The agreement was dated March 28, 2013 and signed by Mr. Murata. The letter created a timetable that extended the replacement of the pump station past the deadline. In part, the letter reads, the upgrades need not to be completed by July 1, 2013. MCRI requested the 2012 agreement be amended and the schedule may not require immediate action by MCRI. There is no council resolution to support this agreement and the pump station has not been rebuilt as required by the 2012 funding agreement. Yet the VTMUA's own engineer identified hazards within the structure <coughs> as early as December 7, 2012. So I'm bringing this up to the council because in the very near future, you will have to make a decision how we're going to bond for this. We'll put ideas out there but be well versed in this. This cannot wait much longer. It's, it's going to come, and we cannot wait for the whole thing to break down or the additional pipes to break. They did, did put money in escrow as required, but it's not nearly enough. And we know by waiting already, it's the, according to one, the engineers, it's increased the price of a $1.2 to $1.5 million project by 15%. So as anything, unfortunately, the price will go up and we're going to have to make a decision. I would estimate sometime with the, talking to our MUA before the first of this of next year. But I would like to have it done in the next several months where we're going to go with this. But it has to be done. In the meantime, are you contacting the NGEIT to find out, you know, how we apply for that trust fund money? Yes, Mr. Scobo has applied. Uh, we've been working with him. Mrs. Yetter has been uh, discussing this with, uh, with him because she, because she serves as CFO for both entities. Uh, we, he has applied the application for the assessment management plan. Uh, so we know what we have, what components we have, what's the timetable, and it, there's other different things to the asset management plan. Then we have to identify projects. Uh, this was one that was lacking, but we're going to put this in. We we're also looking at studying the 10-inch main because if you increase flow out of the pump house, there may be problems with the 10-inch force main, which you know is 8,600 feet. So we're looking at the total system. But where we have to start, the hub, is pump house two. So if you're beginning to look for funding through the trust fund, then can your payout probably could be scheduled over a period of time. Right? If we do it the right way, and it is competitive, I think they're only giving out 10 of these it's not a grant, but there's forgiveness if you do, do it and you do it immediately and you follow through with the projects. A lot of this could be forgiven. The interest rates are lower, but you may look, say, it's $60,000 due to the asset management plan. When you do the project, part of that, if not all of it, may be forgiven. Well, with that in mind, let's go. Are you proceeding? Yes, absolutely, we're proceeding. Yeah. Well, we need to know what NJEIT is going to say, because if they say no, then we're going to have to look for bonding. Well, then I think it's also incumbent upon us to contact our state legislators who might be able to uh, I've, already, 
I've already discussed it with them. It continues. Uh, Congressman Gottheimer's staff has identified USDA uh, possibilities to redo it. So we are looking under every way to finance it. And Senator Orho's office is trying to work with him. It, absolutely. So we, we, this has been going on for over a year, but I really want to push this forward as quickly as possible. And we still have to see how the bankruptcy goes, but I just don't want to sit back and wait because, you know, bankruptcies are very delicate uh, and they can be strung out. Uh, the USDA um, application, as a town, as a township, we're over the benchmark of 20,000. Can that particular facility that we're talking about be considered a population separate from ta Vernon Township so I we can apply for it? The day that we were in Alamuchi, I asked the representative, and she said it's, it could be difficult which is why um, well, that's mayor, why we brought up the, the, mayor, the different postal zones and, right. and all the rest of it. So that's that's an issue with USDA, I think. Yes, although our, in our argument, which you were there, we, we say our population is 23,000, but perhaps at most only 8,000 people are using the system. And, and just, for right. the pub, just for the public's purpose, what, what the representative was saying is if you, could, if you could isolate areas, let's say, of your town that are definitely separate, like if you have, and they mentioned separate zip codes. Well, we do fit in with that because if you're looking at Great Gorge Village, it is its own entity. So that's where, you know, the, they, they mentioned it and then they kind of shied away from it when it was brought up that this is a scenario of our town because of us being serviced by several different zip codes and actually having the sewer in one specific area. So, but anyway, but that's what they've been pursuing. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, signals go. That's it for now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Move ahead. On to the consent agenda. Resolution 17134, authorizing the cancellation of outstanding <coughs> checks over six months old to municipal cash balances. As the name states, this resolution cancels old, uncashed checks. Resolution 17135, resolution enabling agent and, co and contracting for online power purchase. As discussed at the last council meeting, this resolution authorizes the township to enter into a discount power purchase program. Resolution 17136 authorizing change order two and change order three of contract with Billy Contracting and Restoration Incorporated for municipal roof replacement. This resolution authorizes change orders for the roof project creating a credit in favor of the township. Resolution 17137 2017 salaries for non-union full-time employees similar to the union contracts that were approved this year. This resolution establishes the pay for various non-union positions full-time. Resolution 17138, 2017 salary for non-union part-time employees. Like resolution 17137, this resolution establishes salaries for 2017 for part-time non-union employees. Resolution 17139, authorization to endorse a treatment works approval application to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection for construction of an on-site wastewater treatment and disposal system. Alteration at National Winter Activity Center located at 44 Breakneck Road, Block 192.02, Lot 25, and Block 192.01, Lot 13. This resolution endorses a TWA application for wastewater treatment as required by the DEP due to improvements to the property. Resolution 17140, renewal of liquor licenses in the Township of Vernon for the 2017-2018 licensing term. This is a renewal of various liquor licenses in the township. May I have a motion to adopt resolution 17-134 through 17-140? Uh, may I uh, separate resolution 17134? May I have a motion to adopt resolution 17-135 through 17-140? Motion. Roll call. Yes. 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 Yes, with the exception of resolution 135, I will abstain on that resolution and yes to all the others. Um, Council Member, Council President Burke. Yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 17135 through 17140. 
the question I have about 134 is we have a check outstanding from Acme Supermarket. Why? When they're right up the road. This is the court. These are court checks, municipal court. So I'm not involved with the municipal court checkbook. Well, but I mean, is, is, has someone at I'm least. I'm sure Donna contacted them. And you want well, to walk the check up I the would street? think that should be checked out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she checked it. <laughs> I, well, unless you have an initial to that effect, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't pass this. <laughs> okay. May I have a motion to <laughs> to adopt resolution seventeen one thirty four? Move. Second. Do I have a second? Roll call. No. <laughs> yes. Why? Yes. Yes. One of those is from my son's ex old girlfriend. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Introduction first reading of proposed ordinances. Ordinance 17 10, Ordinance of the Township of Vernon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 148 and Chapters 250 of the Code of the Township of Vernon regarding potentially dangerous dogs. The township does not have a section in its code for potentially dangerous dogs. This updates the code. May I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 17-10? Motion. Second. With a public hearing to be held July 10th. Motion by Councilmember Davidson and second by Councilmember Correct. Does anybody have any biting Roll. comments? Roll call. <laughs> Roll call. Yes. <laughs> yes, sure. Excuse me. Wait, excuse, excuse me, uh, Councilmember Rosuda has a comment. Just a question. We were talking about potentially dangerous dogs. And before I get in between man and his best friend, best friend, <laughs> I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Is this because a dog has been judged to be you know, a fighter or an attacker or something like that? It says adjudicated. Yeah, that, that is correct. There was a dog recently adjudicated to be a potentially dangerous dog. The township did not have an ordinance in place to address that situation. Therefore, we're requesting, that's why this is being put forward. Okay. I think I remember this. You should not place our people at risk. Councilmember Rizzuto? Yes. Councilmember Wetzel? Yes. Next, we have Ordinance 17-11, uh, Ordinance Amending the Salary Ordinance for Non-Union Employees. This resolution creates or adjusts the salary ranges for positions that are either at the top of the range or are new. May I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 1711 with a public hearing to be held July 10th, 2017. Ms. Holmes ha has made a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Roll call. Yes. Yes. Councilmember Wetzel? Yes. Councilmember Wetzel? Yes. Council President Hurt? Yes. Motion carries to introduce Ordinance 1711 with a public hearing on July 10th. Ordinance 17 uh, 09, bond ordinance appropriating $3,636,500 and authorizing the issuance of $2,948,000 of bonds or notes of the township for various improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the Township of Vernon in the County of Sussex, New Jersey. This ordinance is a reduction in the original proposed bond removing the field rumor pool car and traffic messaging trailer that have been removed. The bond ordinance includes the purchase of fire equipment, police equipment, improvements of various streets, DPW equipment, and improvements to the municipal property. May I have a motion to open to the public hearing for ordinance 1709? Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Is there anyone from the public that would like to address this ordinance? <coughs> Seeing no one, may I have a motion to close to the public hearing for ordinance 1709? Motion. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. May I have an, uh, my motion to adopt ordinance 1709? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. 
Councilmember Cady? Yes. Councilmember Coleman? Yes. Councilmember Rizzuto? Yes. Councilmember Wessel? Yes. Council President Murphy? Yes. Motion carries to adopt the ordinance. Council comments? Mr. Uh, Kadish? Um, I noticed in, on the internet there were some comments about how who's responsible for passing the sewer uh, contract. And uh, all I have to do is ask who negotiated it, number one, and who signed the contract. And it wasn't the people that were stated in the internet on Facebook or wherever it was. Uh, and I think people should really stick to uh, the real truth rather than the alternate truth. And uh, I really feel that that whole part of that should be investigated. Seems to me it's absolutely necessary to get the true facts out in this political season. That's my comment. Councilmember Ross? Okay, I had some comments. Um, when we buy these new vehicles, my suggestion is to buy certified cars and trucks. You can save a lot of money because somebody else has taken the hit. You can buy a extended warranty. And we have a whole department that fixes cars, so I wouldn't really be um, too concerned, and you can save a lot of money because um, somebody um, took the hit for the devaluation of it. So just a suggestion. I bought certified cars all my life and never had a problem. You buy them with 20,000 miles on them, you can save ten, fifteen thousand dollars 15000 Well, that's my point there. My second point is um, Mr. Rizzuto had asked for the list of money that we spent on the Wisteria property. And it came to $20,000. And that was just with the lawyer and the surveyor and the due diligence. But that wasn't land conservancy. We had that on for a year. We paid for that. So that's another twelve or $13,000. Then now, I am sure Corey Stoner or the engineer did some work on that as well. So you could probably add a few thousand dollars on that. So we voted to purchase this property, but we never got to vote to not purchase the property. So my point is, is when we don't follow a process, and we were left out of the process, um, we can't be accountable. And we're here to be accountable for what we spend. That money to me right now, I feel we could have just thrown right out the window, drive through town and just throw all those dollars out because we wasted all that money because we did not get the opportunity to vote for or against it. No matter what you felt, whether it would pass or not, we should have had that opportunity. But uh, to me, you didn't follow the right process and um, we lost a lot of money. And I'm very upset about this. The taxpayer does not deserve this. And that's all I'm going to say about that. It's very important to follow the process. When government doesn't follow the process, we lose money. Every discipline has a process. And unfortunately, we lose money when we don't follow it. Councilmember Rizzuto? Thank you. Um, briefly, I have just a brief comment. I believe Friday there was a, uh, I know we've had, we have a potential problem with the largest taxpayer and they're going through a difficult time and we are trying to work with them but I think it should be pointed out because I've, I've heard any number of times what do these people do for the residents of the township residents of the county and Friday for the grand total of one can of canned goods per person they obtained free entry into the park and were at all the rights and privileges of the park for the day for a can of soup and which is what a dollar and a half per box. And uh, I think that was a, a wonderful gesture on the part of uh, the people at Mountain Creek and the fact that they used a way of taking that donation and enhancing the food banks in the, uh, in the counties. Uh, congratulations to them on a 
on an innovative way of showing the township how the how they appreciate the residents of the township. Thank you. Councilmember Wetzel. Yeah, just one comment. I I hope that somehow cooler heads will prevail and we will be able to come up with some type of an alternative or a solution to mowing the grass at the historical cultural site. That's it. That's it. May I uh, no. make a comment? Sure. Respond to the great mowing. Yeah, the great um, mowing. <laughs> I don't consider anything that we spent for wisteria to be a waste. I consider it an effort to be well informed and I think we were well informed and I believe that we did the right thing and I think to portray it as a waste is a mistake. Uh, secondly, to mow that grass for a hundred, I mean for, uh, for one hour, uh, you can pay a farmer to do it for 60 bucks. I know a farmer that would do that um, and 60 bucks is not much for a society to maintain their property. And I think the blame. Excuse me? I, I can't believe what I just heard. Right. I just can't believe what I just heard. That we're looking at an expenditure of funds which admittedly is at 20,000, which possibly could go up to 35 to 40,000. And we are saying we don't have enough money to go ahead and task one of our employees from the DPW to go ahead and mow a field of grass. I'm just saying it's, uh, it's cheap me, enough. It's cheap enough. I, 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 I think it's a political oh my God. Okay. maelstrom. Are you done, Dan? Yeah. Okay. Um, Excuse me. I, can I just do my comments? No. I <laughs> want to comment. No, you Dan. know what? Let me do my Dan comments said, and then, then you okay. can take your, your story. Then yeah. Let me do my Come comments. On, Write your note. The tip of my tongue. Yeah. Right as far as what I wanted to, write it down. I, the, um, to I just the wanted wall. to, excuse the me, wall. the article about Great Gorge uh, Villages this weekend, um, and I just thought of it when Councilmember Kadish brought it up, but I would be interested in knowing, and I guess I, maybe I have it in, in my paperwork someplace, but the amount that we actually pay Great Gorge Village under the Municipal Services Act, because we're, we reimburse them for plowing. Okay. So I just... Like I said, in addition to whatever it is that they are expending in dues, the, um, I, whether it's Comet Management or whoever, they are actually recipients of this money too, right, from the municipality. Mm -hmm. So that's an additional Good amount point. that they mm -hmm. get. Because that, that, you know. One and a half percent of whatever it costs us a mile right. to plow, they get one and a half percent, right. uh, 150 percent of that. Right. But I'm just saying is in addition to all the money that they are collecting, from their dues, they're also collecting money for the town for the reimbursement of their plowing. Correct. So which which also to, set the formula for everybody else in, in the condo service. Okay. Can I finish my comments? No. <laughs> and um, as far as the Wisteria property goes, are you still in negotiations about the removal of that um, contaminated soil? There is no negotiations because. Well, I should say, let me, I sorry, let me rephrase it. Or are they in the process of attempting to remove that soil? Approximately one month ago, I told them either they remove the soil or we will not purchase it. And I have heard nothing. So it's, and I've gone down there several times to check, like once a week I go down and it's still there. So they wanted, the cost of removing that soil and mediating the problems there is $28,000 and I will not pay one cent of our taxpayer dollars to it. We were not aware of it. They originally say they would remove it, didn't they originally say that they would? They did, and when but they now the their cost? attorney proposed that we add $14,000 to the price, and I said no. And is Rich Winter, was he still working on that? We're gonna have our present counsel take it over. Okay, but Rich Winter was still working on that up until now? He was. We did not anticipate the environmental hazard there, and we learned through due diligence it was there. My comments are done. Well, Dan, you're saying we did the right thing, but we never never came to the council. We, it should have came to us. It should have been brought to us and said, do you want to pay this extra? They thought they were giving us a good deal. Do you want to pay half of the cleanup? 
and we could have voted on it. That's all I'm asking for. But you guys, somebody made the decision. I thought it was well informed in no, terms of the council. I had no clue. Absolutely. Never, did you come to the council here? Did you vote on it? I don't know. I have to look at the minutes. We did not vote on I'm it. I'm an old man, you know. <laughs> well, write it down. But no, we did not vote on it and should have came to us. We should have made that decision. So um, whether you agree with the purchase or not, it should have came to us. And we did lose all that money. And that's the way it was in discussion, was Motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.